So now we will see some instruments uh, which are important, um, which can be quickly uh, scanned through. I am just going to tell you and show you the instruments and uh, the probable question will be where will it be used. So this you already know, this is a BP handle and the blade and the normal BP handles that is used are number 4, number 3 and uh, number 7. Uh, number 7 is for smaller uh, special type of uh, knives. Number 4 and number 3 are the one which we commonly use. Uh, this is a towel clip. Uh, it's a joint towel clip which is commonly used. And these are the surgical blades of various uh, sizes. We normally use number 23 blade. And uh, there are special blades which are used for number 15 and number 11 for making small incisions and curved incisions. Uh, but normally what we use is uh, number uh, 23 or number 22 uh, and also uh, number 15 and number 11 blades are the ones which are most commonly used in uh, practice. Now coming to the practice. Uh, you have got various type of retractors and this is one retractor you might have seen in gynecology that is called as the diva retractor this is mainly used for deep abdominal retraction and for available various depths this is one of the commonest retractor you people have already seen that is a langenbach retractor and that is used for retracting mainly the superficial abdominal surgeries abdominal wall retraction you might have seen it being used in hernia repairs uh, uh, for uh, um, modified radical mastectomies, thyroidectomies, and also some cases of abdominal uh, wall uh, retraction. This is a Kelly's retractor. Kelly's retractor has got an advantage that this can attract the solid organs as well as the hollow viscous. And it is used for deep abdominal retraction, mainly used for surgeries like cholecystectomy and also for splenic surgeries, pancreatic surgeries. Uh, we commonly use when, the, when we don't want to have a deeper injuries now this is a uh, this is a senmark retractor which is ideally used for uh, deeper surgeries to visualize deeper and there is also a light uh, there is also a provision to attach the lights also and uh, that is used for surgeries this is a lung retractor you can see the typical person the, the the appearance and that is uh, that is the one retractor that is used for retracting the lung when we are doing esophagectomies and thoracic surgeries. Now there is, these retractors are malleable retractors which can be uh, modified. The shape can be modified or bent down into various shapes whenever you want to have different types of retractions. Now coming to that retract, that is, was a well wet, liner, wet liner retractor which is used to describe and you might have seen in orthopedics and ENT surgeries where they used to retract the superficial tissues and for thyroidectomy. This is a thyroidectomy retractor which is which you might have most commonly seen called as the Joules retractor. It's a self retaining retractor used for the thyroidectomy. This is a Gelpi retractor again used to do for tendon repair, superficial surgeries, small swelling excision when you want and it's also a self retaining retractor. This is, a, this is a large retractor used for thoracotomy and large abdominal wound and that is used that is called as a Belfour retractor and these are self-retaining retractors. Now what is this? This is, a, this is a proctoscope isn't it? And what is the length up to which you can see the, up with a proctoscope? You can see up to 9 centimeters isn't it? 9 to 10 centimeters can be seen with a proctoscope. And now coming to certain common uh, instruments like cutting and dissecting instruments and uh, this is a cutting scissors scissors which has got a flat blade and that is used to to do, to, to to use for cutting the uh, scissors and that is a curved dissecting scissors curved dissecting scissors called as a mayo scissors this can use to cut uh, the fascia muscle uterus breast and this is these are actually dissecting scissors also and they can also cut the uh, th now clamping vessels, the clamping can be uh, different types of clamps that are available. We call them artery forceps, mosquito forceps, large artery forceps which can be straight or curved and different types of tissue holding forceps. Right. So let's see one by one. 
one is the artery forceps or a mosquito which is used to small to, to hold on to small vessels right and its jaws can be curved or it can be straight okay that is of the mosquito forceps which is the smallest forceps of the size you can see these are the mosquito forceps of various sizes or curved mosquito forceps now uh, you can have uh, the, uh, the there's some forceps like this these are the right angle forceps these are used for deeper tissue dissections and that is speci especially when you want to ligate the vessels and dissect out deeper tissues you can use right angle forceps and these right angle forceps are used in various surgeries now coming to the clamping instruments and these are these are hemostatic clip applicator and which is again used for applying clips to various vessels or ducts when you are dissecting in deep now coming to the the grasping and holding instruments you can see there are three types of holding instrument there's those are in common one is called as the alice forceps and you know the very well the various uses of alice forceps which is used to hold the tissues like muscles fascia and uh, the it is in gynecology it has got other uses also but basically these are holding forceps but they are crushing now coming to this forceps those are the babcock forceps babcock forceps is available to uh, to grasp the delicate tissues like intestine fallopian tube ovaries appendix and uh, they are used for the operations of similar kind now there is a tissue holding forceps called as cocker's forceps and cocker's forceps is used to hold heavy tissues they are crushing and they have got edge the jaws will be uh, jaws will be will be having sharp tooth like appearance and they are otherwise called as oshner's forceps also and uh, there is a sponge holding forceps which are used to hold the sponges and it is used for painting and also it can be can also be used to hold the the tip the cervix when you are doing the dilatation procedures of the vagin for the cervix now you have got the towel clips of various sizes uh, the various sizes and the needle holders needle holders always have a groove in when you open up the needle holder and they have got a hatch as well as they have got a groove when you open the uh, the hatch right then they are called as mayo hagar needle holder mayo hagar needle holder and there is a sponge holding forceps which you have already discussed and they are used for cleaning and transferring the uh, the material transferring the material then there is a skin hook which is uh, which has got one end as a flat a flat hook and other is a three prong end which is used for retracting the superficial tissues and uh, there are iris suture cutting scissors which are used for sutures cut, cutting the sutures one blade is straight another blade is curved and hooked which can be taken underneath the suture and you can cut it and you were very well they, like, we discussed about the uh, the bp handle and now the lister bandage scissors which are used to split the bandages you can slip in the blunt end inside the bandage and use the sharp end to cut the bandage right and what is this this is the uh, this is a humpy knife isn't it it is used for taking the skin graft superficial skin graft and this instrument is called as the humpy knife what is this this is a stripper mayo stripper used for varicose vein surgery for patients with perforator incompetence after saphenofemoral ligation what is this this is a, a giggly saw it is used for bony divisions of various areas and uh, these giggly saws there are two two hooks on either hand and that can be held with the jaw and you can actually cut the bones using the saw and it is used for the uh, for cutting long bones as well as mandible or maxilla when you are doing maxillectomy or mandibulectomy procedures this is a typical forceps whose edge the tip will only move the tip will only move and this is called as yeoman's forceps used for taking biopsies from lower rectum for rectal tube and this is an intestinal non crushing clamp and this clamp is used whenever you are going to whenever you are performing intestinal resection to keep it on either side so and it will be a soft crushing non crushing clamp now this is a crushing clamp again used in stomach when you are doing gastrectomy on the specimen side and this is hemostatic so that it will reduce the bleeding also so that is called as that is that is the uh, the crushing gastrectomy uh, forceps 
and that is that is used for the procedures when you are doing it to apply on the resection side of the gastrectomy and this is a bulldog uh, uh, a bulldog uh, uh, applicator and this is used a vascular clamp bulldog vascular clamp whenever you want to uh, doing a vascular dissection and uh, whenever you are dissecting close to the vessels or you think there is a bleeding it is also used to perform pringles maneuver in hepatobiliary surgeries and this this force this uh, needle you have already seen in many areas these are called as a true cut needle or core needle biopsy needle taking core needle biopsies and what are they they are the laparoscopic trochas there are various types of trochas that is available 10 mm trochas and 5 mm trochas which is used for various laparoscopic procedures and they are they usually have a valve which will allow the instrument to go in but will not allow the gas to come out and they are usually self retaining trochar once you insert and you have got uh, the trochas which are transparent where you can see the instruments going in and out or you can have metallic trochas also now you have got the you might have seen on the right side that and cauteries there are two types of cauteries monopolar cautery will have only one tip and bipolar cauteries will have two tips there are other accessory uh, hemostatic uh, ma machines that is available like force triad and harmonic scalpel which works on different principle than an electro cautery and the electro cauteries are monopolar cautery which is shown on the right side and you can you might have also seen a bipolar cautery probes which has got two prongs and where the transmission of the current is between only the two prongs so there is no lateral dissemination of current right now last but not the least of the initial session you should know about the sutures and the sutures are of different kinds and you will be uh, you may be asked to identify the sutures you know there are absorbable sutures and non absorbable sutures absorbable sutures can be from the uh, natural resources like catgut or chromic catgut or it can be from artificial sources like polyglactin which is called as vicryl poly caproic acid or monocryl polydioxanone or pds and polybutyrate right these are absorbable sutures non absorbable can be from natural sources like cat, uh, for cotton and nylon and can can be synthetic like proline polypropylene and polyester to be and daxon uh, dacron so these are the various types of sutures but you will be just asked to identify what is this this is violet in color it is a braided suture and that is the that is typical of a vicryl or polyglycolic acid now this is yellow in color and it is in a in a foil with polyglycolic acid and that is called as that is catgut chromic catgut then you have got various numbers of various forceps polypropylene is blue in color polyester is uh, is is green in color you have got silk which is black in color and nylon and monocryl it is transparent as the number of suture increases the the depth the color of the suture will also decrease that is uh, sorry the, the as the number increases the thickness will decrease so if you want to use finer suture use small the largest number right so that is why uh, you normally that is how you identify various type of 